Hey guys, it is Adam from the Dimensional Gaming Squad here, bringing you with something about Beast Quest, but it's not a Beast of You. If you watch the last Beast of You, you will know what it is. It's actually a series ranking of worst to best from series 1 to series 13. Um, I do need to say though, I like all of the seasons of Beast Quest, and um, don't feel too sad if your favourite isn't where you want it to be, because this is my opinion. Uh, I've made this order based on um, the beast, the book, the story, I meant not the book, <laughs> the story, and my own personal opinion. Um, for each series, I'll be showing my favourite beast from that series. So, because um, I don't exactly want to be talking about my least favourite beast from that series, because well, no one wants to talk about Claw. Yeah, no one wants to talk about Claw, Nanook, Targro. I actually forgot the others. <laughs> um, yeah, I got my favourite from each series over here. And um, we got 13 seasons to go through, 78 books to go through. Let's get this over with. This is going to be a... Get, get yourself some popcorn, you're going to be here for a while. Unless you just skip to the end, just to see my favourite. Then, um, why are you here watching the video? Why am I saying this at the beginning? Um, anyway, um, before I get into this, I do need to say shout out to Luca Screen for um, the book reviews and his own ranking on these books. It's kind of a bit weird that he did series 1 to 12 instead of series 1 to 13. He uploaded it before he uploaded the Skurik book review, and um, I'm just wondering why didn't he do it for his series after series 13. But, eh, I never know. He, <laughs> I never know. He never knows much about me. I never know much about him, which is good, because it's absolutely strange if you think about it. <laughs> okay, let's get into this. Uh, least favourite series, so 13th place, is the New Age, Series 11. Uh, as you can probably see, I hope so anyway, otherwise this camera has just gone out and I'm just talking to myself. An audio version, so a podcast, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Uh, we have Brutus as my favourite book from Series 11. Uh, that is what it was in the review. I was tempted to swap it with Serpio because I like them both. But I stuck with Brutus. Uh, the story for Series 11 is pretty much the same as Series 1. And it's just um, Tom goes through a kingdom to uh, stop this evil sorceress or sorcerer to um, from taking over Avantia. So, yeah. To make it even more similar to Series 1, it's using the blood of the good beast of Avantia to make these beasts. So, uh, why? This is, uh, this is, this is too much like Series 1 for me. And being called the New Age, I would expect it probably a unique storyline. But we don't get that till, well, the next series on this list. So that is Series 1, probably, not what? Series 11, New Age. 13th place, probably the worst series, and most of you could probably agree with me there. Coming in 12th place is Series 8, The Pirate King, with my favourite book being Hexen, The Body Snatcher. Now, I do need to say, as you probably tell by the ranking, if you saw 160, I'm not a really big fan of any of the beasts in Pirate King. They're all good, but, they're, but I don't really like all of them. Um, this... When it comes to story-wise, it's just very bland and not much happens in the story. The Beast is its high point, but my personal opinion just says, no, I don't like these beasts. So, Balisk is alright. Hexen I like. Cronus I like as well. Koron, okay. Bloodborne, Torno, no. They're a waste of space. And that's pretty much all the books in both of these series, which are a waste of space. Series 11 and Series 8, both of them are a waste of space. And I think it could have been better if, let's say, probably uh, Series 14 or 15 had six books in a series and basically swapped places with these two seasons so they could have four. Maybe that might be make it a bit better, but I don't know. I'm still halfway through Series 14, so... <laughs> okay, so... Uh, 11th place um, is Series 4, The Amulet of Avantia. Similar reason to why it's here to um, Series 8. It's, apart from the beast being good, it's actually the story that's really good and the beasts that's really bad. I like Stealth, uh, 
obviously, being my favourite in that, that series. But um, Equinus and Nixa are okay. Stealth is good. And Rashu, Kaluna and Blaze are just bad. So the beasts are really bad on this point of view, but somehow got a rather high score when it came to the total rankings for the beast view. So I don't even know how that even happened. <laughs> Uh, I just make, I just do this, I go along, and I don't even know how that got, uh, hold on. Oh, no mind, no mind, I got 10th place, and <laughs> it lost to pretty much every other season. Okay, so now we're moving on to 10th place. Um, yeah, I'm not really good with these rankings, because I don't have a script in front of me for once. So I'm just making this up as so I go along, like I do with everything I talk about. So, yay, uh, yay. 10th place is Series 7, The Lost World. Um, Carnivora, obviously, <laughs> the favourite book of the series, because, well, I have the favourite book from each series here. Um, Carnivora is on my top 10 ranking, along with Crestor. Uh, Elik just missed out. Madara, God knows where we are. Hold on. Oh my god, there's still, there's still a cat out there. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I need to talk, stop talking about that one. The Beast That Shall Not Be Named is... Okay, Hellion and Convoy are just a waste of space. Like, pretty much the beasts in series 8 and 11, and the story in. I don't know, the story is actually really good in series 4. Uh, yeah, like half of series 4. It's just Convoy and Hellion which are a waste of space in this series, and I think this would have been better if the last four books of um, series 7 were its own series instead of the first two. That would have been a lot better. So, as you probably have guessed, we're gradually moving our way down into good books now. Like, Series 7 I enjoyed, the others not as much, but I still like them all. All have positives. Series 11, bringing back a rather popular storyline for, story plot for Series 1, with a little twist of a new villain. Uh, series 8, um, Good beasts, but bad story. Series 4, vice versa. Series 7, only two wastes of space, but beasts, and that's it. So now we're moving on to ninth place with Series 3, The Dark Realm. Now some of you may be surprised of this being this low on the list, because um, Naga's one of my favourite beasts, second favourite I might add from my rankings. But I do need to say, this is ranked for all of the beasts in that, this series. And Cayman and Sting are good. This is great. But, <laughs> unfortunately, Torgor, Score and Tusk are not. The story is better than Series 7, to my opinion. Hence why it's higher up. But it's probably around the same area. Because there's just as many, there's more wasted beasts here. So... <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so, probably uh, just a mediocre uh, series. Especially in Series 4 by a long shot for me. Well, not exactly a long shot. But, yeah, you get what I'm saying that. Um, Naga is the best book in that series, obviously. And if uh, my rankings are correct, it is the second, the second series... That does not have my favourite book being the finale. Because the first one was actually series one, which I forgot about because I thought Air Force was my favourite. But no, it was actually takes. Okay. Um, eighth play. Hold on. Oh, man, I need to get used to this. Uh, 11th, 10th, 9th. Yeah. Eighth place is, well, series nine, the Warlock Staff. Uh, same amount of Wasted Beasts than series three. With the three being Ursus, Minos, and Caraca, but in my opinion, they're a lot better than the three wasted beasts here. Uh, Torpix and Silver are amazing books, and both are my top ten. And Spike Finn just missed out, and that is also a really good book. So um, the story starts off bad, but it moves up to get bigger and better. Uh, I love my snakes. <laughs> this is a bit biased. But it is my opinion, so I don't care. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Torpix is the best book in Series 9 by a long shot. And I know Lucas might disagree with me because he likes Silver. Which I agree. I like Silver as well. Torpix is slightly better. 
Now we're halfway through this uh, ranking and we're nine, 10 minutes in. Wow. Okay, we might get this done in the normal average amount of time my videos span. Um, let's go for this one. Let's go back to the very beginning being Series 1. Series 1 is like, well, is the start of the series, the premiere series to test whether this series will go on to be big and better. It is for half of the seasons to come out next. Um, I think Series 1 is supposed to be good but bad at the same time, just so it can make the other seasons look better. That's why it's higher up. It has less Wasted Beasts than Series 9 and 3. Two Wasted Beasts like in Series 7, though, but the story is a lot better than Series 7. The story is basically the same as Series 11, though, but this one's actually the original idea, so that's why it's a lot higher. The Wasted Beasts are, as you probably guessed by how much I completely hate them, it's Nanook and Arcta, but Ethos and Antagus are both amazing. Inferno and Sephiroth are mediocre, but I still like them a lot. And Inferno gets extra points for recent helpings he's been doing for series 12 and 14. Is it, what did they do in 12? Um, no, he didn't do anything, All right? did he? Uh... No, he didn't do anything in Series 12. Um, series 14, and I believe a special I read recently. I think it was probably Arax he helped in. He definitely helped in Spyros, but Arax, I'm not sure. Jesus Christ, I read so many books, I can't even remember what, who did what now. Okay, um, Arxa was in Arax, I know that. But he didn't get any extra points, because he was just as useless. Um, okay, so that is... Um, Halfway done in the series, and I need to stop talking about series one because I could go on about this one all day, just like all the other ones. Uh, we're now down to the final six, and I need to say probably this is probably the hardest choice for me because I could swap these lot around so many times, and I would not be upset. So what I decided to do is that, I mean, like the top two are ones which I know will stay up there. The other four. I could change multiple times, but I think this is what I'm happy with. And this isn't set in stone, because I'll be doing another series ranking when I get series 20 done, like Lucas said he would do. I'm looking forward to that, because it's nearly there at series 20, it's just three more books off from series 19, and four books of series 20, and then voila! Woohoo! Yay! Um, okay, I'm such a hand jester guy, yay. Um... Okay, so let's go to sixth place. Being series 10, Master of the Beasts. And the only book in this ranking which has the new cover. Which, like I said in the ranking, I'm not a fan of the new cover, but I had to put up with it. Because um, series 14, 15, 16, 17 and 18 have the new covers. And so does Spyros. The other specials don't, though, that I have, so... Where's well, the logic in that? Um, it's called pre-owned books. They, uh, they, the book's a bit more tattered up, but I like the cover. It looks better. Um, series 10. Um, the story is amazing. Um, what could have been a great finale to the entire franchise as it is. And um, the beasts are just as good. Tekton and Sham Shamani are not as good, but they're not horrendously terrible. Um, they're just... There, they're just mediocre, whereas the others are just good or great. Okay, now we're down to the last five seasons. Um, if you've been keeping track, you know which seasons they are. And some of you are probably wondering, how is this season this far up? Well, I'm just going to say, it's no longer going further up, because Series 12 is next, The Darkest Hour. Yeah, The Darkest Hour, Series 12, is fifth place. Um, I don't know why he's... Some people don't like it. I don't know why Lucas kind of doesn't really like it that much either. But I really did enjoy this one. There was something about it that I clearly didn't notice, that Lucas noticed, that he didn't like, but I liked, apparently. Um, the beasts are amazing. Merkur's a bit confusing. And Solak is just there. Kajin, I did originally did not like. But if he, ha if he brings back a beast that I like, then obviously he's got a he good spot. Um, Big Rash, same thing, but instead of a beast, more like a token from that beast, so yay. Isridia, 
a unique concept with the fight, and I prom and it's probably one of the best ones, even though I wasn't really keen on it. But it's just decent, and I like it. So that's why it's here. Woohoo, my opinion. Yay. Uh, top four. Oh, God. The these ones. Oh, oh these ones. Oh. Oh, all four, of, all four of these seasons are amazing. Um, I think uh, I might change the order as soon as I'm done with this recording, but I'm thinking I'm going to stick with it for now because I'm actually really happy with this one. So fourth place is series two, the Golden Armor. This one was originally my favorite series, and then I figured out, hmm, that's only there because lots of people like it. I like it. The beasts are really good, apart from Claw, and uh, <laughs> apart from Claw, and um, yeah, this is where we move into the territory of only one wasted beast. I'm pretty sure we got into that territory when we talked about series twelve. So I like wasted beast here. Claw Wasted Beast here. Um, story is amazing. A lot better than Series 1 story. The Beast, uh, according to my little ranking here for the Beast reviews, is better than Series 1. But it's kind of around the same for me, really. Trillion and Sultra are the only ones that stand out a lot there. Viper and Arachnid are there. Zephyr I liked a lot. And Claw is just... <laughs> a waste <laughs> um and now we move on to the top three i know what i said when i got to the top six are pro that the top two stay where they are but with these final three seasons i decided to compare the score they got in their beast review and the score i would give them in their story and with that i've got one they they all got uh well one series got best for beast of you and second best for story another one got second best for um story but worse for uh beasts and the other one best no nah fuck worse for story oops I said a swear word oh no I'm gonna get punished in the next video now oh no uh one got worse for story and one got Psycho Best for Beast. So, if that made any sense, they're all pretty much even. But I think I'm going to need to give this one basically due to nostalgia reasons. Third place being Series 13, The Warrior's Road. Um, Cobra is the best book in this series, obviously, by a long shot. The fight went on for the whole book, like Trillion. The one wasted beast is Targro, Skurik is debatable for being wasted, Vermok maybe as well, but they're all good. Targro is surprisingly okay. And um, Cobra is just pretty much perfection put on a silver platter. But I wouldn't say it's better than Vespic though, so <laughs> that is probably just biased reasons and nostalgia for Vespic, but eh, my opinion. The story is amazing, it's... Apparently, to what Lucas says, similar to Series 18, meaning this one has a unique story, which it does. Series 18 just copies it, so I'm looking forward for that series when I get to it. Uh, what else can I say about this book? The beasts are amazing, I already said that. The story is unique and great, and what could have been a great ending for Jezrin, but we don't know if he's actually gone. So we'll find out in future seasons with the Beast Reviews. Now, now we're down to two. And then there were two. Series 6, The World of Chaos, and Series 5, The Shade of Death. Now, um, oh, God. Um, I know I said about I could pretty much have this series being the best, but no. I generally can't decide between these two. One has the best story. One has the best set of beasts. As of these two, and um, if I uh, and my opinion is pretty even here because if I just do the negative parts for them, so like the story for series six and the beast for series five, I'll have two negative points for series five, but only one negative point maybe for series six for the story, and for the vice versa, amazing parts in the story, pretty much the whole thing for series five. And 
I'm going to need to include Komodo here because it's I like Komodo a lot. It's actually the majority of the Beast in Series Six. Five Beast in Series Six I like. Four Beast in Series Five I like. Um. Yes, I know I probably should have made up my mind before I started recording, but this is something which I have to explain to you guys. That I can just swap every now and then for so many times. Um, the finales are both amazing, obviously. <laughs> the Flying Beast, Hawkeye and Fang are amazing. The Underground Beast, Tremor and Komodo, or maybe Rock, I don't know, are amazing. The Outcasts, Bimura and Koldo are good. Surprisingly, and then the beasts that are just there being Merc and Terror or Crab and I'm going to say Rock now are okay and good. But, oh, I still don't know, I still don't have a choice. So, because um, a few weeks ago when I was doing this, it was this one that was my favourite. But then, a week ago, it was this. But now, I can't decide. So... <laughs> Uh, this is probably the most anticlimactic end in here, but um, I think I'm gonna need to do it here. I don't care if you got if you guys don't like it. I can't decide between these two. So both of them are the best se seasons. Both of them are the best. So um, yeah, we no don't have a second place. We have two for we have a tie for first place. Story wise here, beast wise here, both amazing. You're probably saying why isn't series six third place and series thirteen tied here? Because it has the best beast. I know. But it's my opinion. These are both here for nostalgia reasons as well. This one brings a good story. Along with a unique concept. With the main villain's servant. Or partner in crime. Being Tom's mother. And this one's just a continuation to that series. With a. Uh, oh, I'm best go over here. <laughs> with a. Um, basically Tom going around Kaonia. To get. What was I talking about? Um, yeah, yeah. Thanks, blurb. Uh, to get um, potion, no ingredients for a potion to cure his mother from the dark side. Uh, yeah. So these two books are my favourites, and um, <laughs> yes. So I'm sorry for the anticlimactic ending, but I really can't decide which one's the best out of these two book seasons. Both have their negative. Both have their positive. Muro's wasted space series six. Rock and Cold are racist space in Series 5. But the story makes more up for that. Um, I hope you understand. Lucas Green's um, review actually has a first place and a second place. Mine doesn't. So, I don't know what you want me to do about that. I'm not going to change it. And, um, as quoted from the introduction of my favourite TV show, I wouldn't trade it for the world. So, I'm not going to swap these around. So, Vespa can make to us. It's a tie. The clash of wills. And um, <clears throat> thank you to another suggestion of Lucas Green. Um, because it's something similar to the Beast review. He thinks I should start this series called Bastard of the Beast. So, leave in the comments below of two beasts that you want to go against each other. Who you think will make a good fight. And I will give my facts about both of these beasts. And say which one I think will win. And um, maybe Lucas would do that as well. I don't know. Uh, hopefully, hopefully he does. So then it won't be just a one-sided conversation. But um, it won't. Be, it might not be. I don't know. But uh, yeah. If you want to see that series, Battle of the Beasts, just put in the comments below two beasts that you want to see go against each other. So Vespic and Amixus, I'm up for that. Uh, Koba and uh, Kamar. Koba will obviously win. But yeah. Don't make it like something that would be like really obvious to predict. So let's say Hellion versus uh, Balisk, let's say. Hellion versus Balisk. Balisk would obviously win due to it being a water snake and Hellion being a fiery foe. But yeah, if you like the concept for that idea, you can thank Luke Screen for that and leave in the comments below what you would like what the beasts you like to see me compare to. Um, those videos are probably around five minutes long, unless I get multiple comments, then I'll put it all into one video and try and span them over the reach of maybe three to five minutes for each discussion. 
But anyway, that is all for this time. That is my rankings. I know you're probably not happy with the <laughs> final result, but I am. And this is probably the most happy I've ever been when recording the video. So, anyway, like I said, that is all for this time. If you liked what you saw, leave a like, leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Please leave in the comment below what you like to see in Battle of the Beast. Uh, press that little notification bell notification. Uh, press that little notification bell down in the corner below, and I'll see you next time.